Hello, everyone. One second. I just need a bit of time. Okay, here we go. Let me turn this on. Okay, it's my third time doing this, so everything's a bit of a mess. Let me know if that, that worked. I think it's working now. All right, hello everyone. Um, yeah, like I said, and uh, maybe I shouldn't say it again because I saw a comment that said I repeat everything. Oh, let me fix my camera. I have such a bad setup going right now. I hope soon I'll have a better system, but for now that's what I have <laughs> it's so makeshift I have like a bunch of little tiny programs running to be able to do this uh, yeah I think this is the most amount of people too that have joined from the last three streams so that's cool um, yeah it's an Aston uh, they actually sent me this microphone so All right, let's let's begin. I don't know how many people have heard the song yet. That I'm pretty sure most people that join probably have heard it before. It came out two days ago, but curious to know how many people think I should just play through the song, and I can kind of scroll around and show all the parts, but play the whole thing, or just skip that all right I'm gonna play it one thing is I was having some trouble with with getting everything to work my CPU is spiking so hopefully this plays properly could be a disaster play it properly wow okay there's more than 100 people here that's a record. So one thing I wanted to show first was the early, how the song started basically. Hmm. This happens sometimes. Check this out. Everything looks... Oh, no, no, I get it. Okay, the master's all the way down over there. Okay, here we go. So, the first thing I made was... The intro pads. <sighs> See this happen again. That number's too high. <laughs> um... I was sitting in this place. Here, I can get a picture of it. It's a coffee shop in Japan called Streamer. And um, I 
I have a picture on my computer, actually. It's like a um, furniture store. Most of them don't have a furniture store attached to it, but this one was. It was my first time going as well. And up until then, uh, I'd been going to these coffee shops, which really were like not the kind of coffee shop I'm used to. It was kind of like $6 coffee and you have to sit down and there's like table service and everyone smokes inside and it's not a great place to set up a laptop and work. So it was so nice to find this place. Um, I grabbed a picture off my phone because I couldn't find any photos of it, but yeah, I was set up. And it was just a really weird view of people and traffic. And I made this sound. And I didn't think much of it either. It wasn't until I got home or when I got back to my girlfriend's apartment and listened to it and realized it was something kind of like beyond what I'm capable of creating. It just felt really unearthly and then I went on to just kind of abandon that and make this let me drag this back so it's not gonna destroy my computer Then I went kind of further and made this. And I had two versions saved on my computer. One that was just this and one that was this. And then Oh, sorry, I had this version. So this is the, the closest thing that sounds like the song now. And this was like, just bugging me for a long time. I didn't work on it for months, like maybe two months, just cause it was, I had this version that I knew had to be the song and then I had this saved version of the pads that I made in like 10 minutes sitting at the coffee shop. And this felt so much more powerful than this crappy thing that I made. <laughs> and then, um, it sounded like this for the longest time. A bit slower than this, but by accident, I added this loop. Um, the first thing I did was do this to the song. It's just a sample that I found that kind of fit on top in a really weird way, but it was just my way of kind of cracking open the song because I was so tired of, of working against it. And so that, once I slowed it down, oh, this sample's not playing? Oh shit, okay, wait, let me, I, I think I have to drop it into the, So that was like, I knew it couldn't be that crazy, but that was the, the thing that broke open the song. And then I could totally work on it for hours a day. So that's the little story behind it. And just now I'm going to go through kind of my favorite parts or probably all of them. <laughs> so we'll start here. 
Um, here's the, the intro sound. Just a horn note. It's really like probably the least technical part of the song, but somehow it's the only part that actually has magic in it. It's like a contact string library and then this. This is a massive patch and then there's just like an infinite reverb on it. Um, if you're wondering, it looks like someone's wondering, it's like um, you just put like a reverb plugin like this. So I'm going to double the effect now, but or let me do it to the other string sound so it's clear. So like infinite reverb time, but a really small room size. And it starts to feed back. Something like that. So while this is playing, there's this uh, group of layered samples from different places and it's all ambient it's called ambient but <laughs> stuff that just doesn't really move but has a nice texture to it like half stolen half recorded stuff so in the main part of the song it sounds like this I guess I'll go through them. Don't ask me why I named anything what they're named. <laughs> this is just a massive patch with a filter on it. But the notes are pretty layered. So it's like a bunch of chords. So when we play live, I play the top most notes and that loops and then I play the next notes down and eventually build up the moving chord loop. This is probably not even necessary. There's no way that it's audible when everything else is playing. These are weird um, kind of independent projects from people who take like cassette tapes and mess with them and create these crazy. Uh, this is just from a synth that I have. Um, it's the 106, Juno 106. And so that was recorded off the keyboard. This is another stolen sample. And another one. This is um, just a harmonium note sample from Freesound. Oh, the pitch glide on this one, if you heard it, that's just done with a frequency frequency shifter on the on the group. My computer's melting. This is so so terrible. Okay, there's a couple more in here. This is a Bill Evans sample. Uh, a nice stream. And a uh, tape machine sound. This is a Sigaros sample. And this I recorded on the Juno as well. And that's pretty much the whole thing for that. So I'll turn it on and off and you can hear the difference or maybe not hear the difference of the entire group. So 
So that's those two tracks together, or two groups. So in the intro, there's a couple of them playing like this underneath the, the main pads. The name uh, is pronounced Nichome. It's just a way of addressing different neighborhoods in Japan. But Nichome is um, part of the address of the streamer coffee, the name of the coffee shop. Okay, so next up, <laughs> um, there's a couple up here. This is the, the thing that's kind of going around your head in one of the sections. Here is all the main kind of MIDI tracks mostly. Um, uh, I'm going to answer a couple questions. I think I saw some. Um, the processing chain. Maybe, do you mean for the, for mastering? basically try to like the way it plays out of the out of Ableton is the version on Spotify I just put a like a limiter but not very much because um, I do this thing where once I bounced out the the version I'd always be able to brighten it and it would sound better and so I just keep going back and adding high shelves to all the tracks so, uh, <laughs> this groove here. This is like a simpler. And a massive. I think I had to freeze this, but this is just a contact library. I think I say just for every <laughs> every track. This is just... Someone should start counting how many times I say just. Yeah, it's really crazy how much I have to boost the, the highs. Uh, somehow when I'm working, I'll make the most kind of dead sounding like it really is it's kind of scary it'll sound like it's under a blanket here i'll give you a simulation i think you have to put it before this plugin this is what it sounds like when i'm working on it and i don't notice and then once i kind of bounce out the first version or whatever i'll just add a like high fast and be like, whoa, there's the whole song I was working on. And kind of like hear all the details that I added, but could never hear when I played everything together. So what else we have? These are just little synths. Oh, I said just again. I said just again. This is a sound. This is actually an interesting one. Let me find a better part. So this sound came from an artist, well, two artists. Uh, it's Lone and Kiever and Brass, and they had a project called Kona Triangle. I have a feeling Lone made this sound that I stole. Let me see if I can find, I think. Yeah, here we go. So there's this sound in this song. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, 
So that's the sound that I tried to make in Massive. I probably changed it a bit afterwards, but... I'm a bit ashamed, but it was such a cool sound. And I think that's one thing that inspires me is stealing other people's ideas. <laughs> So, moving on, I think, was the bass in here? I think it was. I'll look at the bass quick. There's actually a lot of stuff on this. Let me see what it sounds like without anything. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> this plugin really helps from waves. It somehow makes the bass louder, but the the volume doesn't change as much as it should, so. It's the bass track and there's a piano as well. I like this sound. It's um it's Alicia Keys piano library. But I put a somewhere um like a pitch wobble on it. A fast pitch wobble. I think it sounds pretty cool. glad that people like this piano sound, but I didn't have too much to do with it. So here's anything that's titled with somebody else's name is some idea that I stole. There's a James Blake song where he has like two saw waves that are like slowly coming into pitch and it's such a cool idea. I think I've done that a couple of times in other songs as well. This is one of my favorite instruments uh, and I've never been close to the actual instrument. <laughs> it's an African marimba and each note has a gourd under it and the seeds, I think, I think it's the seeds inside the gourd resonate which uh, add this like high buzz onto each note and a lot of African instruments are like that um, there's this one kind of huge stringed instrument and there's a piece of like they use um, tin can and it vibrates on the top of the instrument and it's so futuristic in a way because nowadays like when we're designing synths and stuff, that's one thing that's so important is that like high end and a lot of instruments don't have it naturally. Um, I guess I'll show how this part works. It's basically two things working together. It's the loop that I showed earlier, but kind of cut up so that the, the amplitude works and that's sidechained to a auto filter on the entire ambient group. So if I turn this off, this just...
And I think it might be attached to, yeah, it's attached to this group as well. And so when I was making it, like if I wanted the filter to be more, um, if I wanted the filter to be higher, I just turn up the one of the clips here. Okay, so what's next here? I stole this sample from Lido, so if you're watching for some reason, I'm really sorry. It's on the last song on his last EP, or last full length actually, not EP. My computer. <laughs> this is another track that shouldn't be even playing at all. Tell me if you can hear it when everything else is playing. Something happened recently. I think it's when my computer's audio output is set to my laptop speakers. Because I'm using this little program to run audio to my laptop speakers so that OBS can pick up the computer audio. Um, okay, so this sample, if anyone is wondering. Sorry, I played that too long. I was thinking in my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, so I found the. It's from a trailer for a Japanese movie with Suzy Chen. I wonder if this is playing. Tell me comments if you can hear that. So that's the part that I, I used. I think without okasan, yokunayone means something's not right or it's not right. It's been a while since I used a voice sample like that. It kind of seems like something that everyone was doing five or six years ago, but then it got kind of weird. <laughs> but this one's so cool. I just like the, the this frequency here that I boosted. Kind of like this weird low breathy sound. So about the the low pass thing, <laughs> um, I feel like I kind of went back on it a bit, but it was my first realization. And then my second realization after that was high shelves are pretty cool, but definitely for stuff like this, if I'm sampling a lot of MP3s, the the high-end frequencies start to build up and you can hear it in the master. Um, so especially mp3 stuff. But everything else, like anything that's totally clean and not gross up there, I'll, I'll leave or boost. Especially stuff that I recorded off the, the Juno. Because I feel like that stuff is really, really okay. You can almost boost it forever and it sounds cool. So I guess now it's kind of organized in a good way, but we'll start looking at the drum stuff. I think I'll solo everything and play it at once.
also without this loop, it's a lot easier to listen to, I guess. I just realized I missed this track. I'm gonna show that quickly. This is just a bunch of tiny little things. Uh, it seems like the best way for me to make a song is build up a bunch of little things that work together. And then it's actually fun to just like kind of go crazy and move everything around and repitch things. So this whole group, I just put everything together because it was easier to see. But So that's pretty much the most entertaining part for me is when I get to make little bits, especially this part when you're like, this is the quieter part of the song. And you can kind of like, I don't know, it just feels really cool to layer a bunch of things together and somehow create a weird story, abstract story. weird if the samples could talk they'd know what this is saying it does feel like it's saying something though in some other language yeah this is such a nice tool each one feels like almost like paint on a canvas but buying good paints instead of using like mr sketch markers this may or may not be my voice but this is totally a stolen idea from Lapalax. Okay, so back to the drums. Um, this part here was a lot more important before I added this to the song because it was almost the only thing holding it together. So without that, it would sound like... But it kind of reminds me of like, um, like an old projector. So like the image is flickering. I don't know, <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. Like old memories flickering in your head. Are my EQs weird? I guess this one looks pretty strange. <laughs> this is just me like going crazy. Especially this is the the project file that I mixed everything in afterwards, so 
I was trying to fix a lot of weird frequencies. That's why all the EQ curves look so crazy. This is a cone. <laughs> I'm not sure how much I put in here. Not a lot, so it's a really nice recording. I might have repitched it. No, I guess that's exactly how I downloaded the file. This is, let's see. This is another trick I think I took from Laplux, especially his older stuff where he put like two wood blocks together of different pitches. This is a pretty ugly sound by itself, but when it's playing, it kind of sounds like someone's actually playing it. This is, I think I made this sound afterwards, but it's a sample from a Bjork song originally. And I think I've used this kind of sound since like the eighth or ninth song that I made. It's nice to have a symbol that has a long decay, but doesn't sound awful. So you can kind of like layer this with a regular symbol and have the high end longer. These rides were from a different song that I made and never finished, but it's a bicycle bell and probably 808 ride symbol. This folder has, I forget how I made this. It's from a couple samples, but spent a long time getting to feel like it's moving around your head. Yeah, I made the whole song in headphones, start to finish. It's usually how I do it because I don't trust my speakers as much as I do my headphones. I think there's a lot of tracks later on in this group. Maybe not. I wonder if it'll focus properly, but. It's, everyone asked me, I should probably just put it in my Instagram bio. <laughs> So, I'm kind of losing my ability to focus, but... I think, uh, like, when I cue something, I just kind of run a... A bell around until I hear something that's more valuable than like so for instance this sound so like there's a couple elements this is kind of messy up here this is especially bad but it sounds pretty good right now but I might come across something that's like bad with it boosted and at zero, it still sounds too loud. So just kind of like take that down and I don't know. So 
So everything's just done. A lot of people say that I should use drum racks, but I'm not a fan because on a drum rack you couldn't do this very easily. You'd have so many different... So like these are probably even pitched. Maybe not. <laughs> I really like this sound. <laughs> and I had some fun with the the pen. I think I went over everything. I didn't go over the drums very well, but it's a little hard to just go through it sequentially. If anybody has something they want to see closer, um, comment. <laughs> oh yeah, the flute. I forgot about the flute. This was the first or second song that I knew about Splice. And... It's it's a cool website. For a lot of the a lot of the packs on there there's some stuff from like more interesting like African percussion stuff without any effects on it. So that stuff's really useful. And Oh yeah, let me fix my Oh, my camera might have died. How long have I been doing this? Usually it lasts like an hour and a half. I can't see it anywhere if anyone knows how long I've been doing it, but I don't think I've been doing it that long. Hmm. Let me try turning it on and off. <laughs> One thing that I do need is a capture card and then I can run everything off my MacBook. The way I'm doing this webcam thing is stupid. I have uh, my dad's camera. Holy shit. <laughs> that's terrifying okay well <laughs> let me charge the battery and I'll put it back in in a second battery died oh for the macbook yeah my room smells like melting plastic and it's getting hotter in here <laughs> okay so the flute oh my i think my laptop's running better without the canon thing running Yeah, so I kind of like decided on the melody in my head and then used different bits of the same flute pack to try and make the melody. And sometimes I got lucky, like if I wanted to go um, 
but maybe this sample had like a trill in it. So I kind of just let little accidents happen. some tracks. I think that'd be fun. This one, these kinds of samples are so useful. This sample alone makes this section sound a lot more like it's flying up and down or something. And I have also the bass track is bending like crazy. That was also an accident, so. I think I just accidentally clicked here one time and played it. So these two together. And yeah, there's probably some reverse kicks. I think I saw, yeah. <laughs> so I'll write the flute melody first and then write the bass line that goes with it. did I do with the bass? Uh, this. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, is, am I supposed to read the question like, what did you do to the bass? <laughs> yeah, this part was really fun to make. Okay, I think that's the whole track, unless somebody has another suggestion. Yeah, I definitely do the, the whistle thing. that's from I have this oh no one can hear this I forgot about that but it's just a bunch of like stock sounds from 727 like for this song when I mastered it I just put a limiter on the master and like when I was mixing I wasn't really turning up and down anything. I was just going through each track and boosting the highs or cutting them. But the song pretty much mixes itself as I'm working with it. So if I add a new sound, I'll just set the volume to where it should be. And maybe go back like a couple more times, but. Oh, the end section. Oh, there's so many questions okay I just use this plugin from Pro Tools so without it it sounds like this there's a lot of things like on the 16th notes Hear it as well. This is just me like screwing around, but 
it's kind of one of those things I was it was um, summertime when I was working on this and I had my laptop out on the cedar table out on the back deck and I kind of decided like no matter how much I screw around somehow I end up listening to it later and liking it so I decided to just go as stupid as I could and while I was making it too I was like this is not going to be good when I listen to it later and somehow I was like oh that was actually yeah so this plugin's like pretty simple It reminds me of the end of, well, actually, it's not reminds me of. The idea is from, well, it's, it's stupid when I forget which ideas are mine and which ideas I've stolen. There's a Apex Twin song, and the end of the, the song is like that. But way worse, like, it's like this. <laughs> I think it's like Mount St. Michael something off of drug use. Or trucks. And the last 30 seconds are like this. And way faster. <laughs> I kind of realized recently that a cool way to think about production is more like physical sensations instead of trying to make like a groove or like a feeling, but actually make it feel like air is moving inside the head in a different way. Yeah, this video will autosave, and I think because I don't pay for anything on Twitch yet, that it just stays up there for a month or something like that. 14 days. <laughs> Let me turn this off. Oh, there's a couple other questions. Let me see. Scroll up. Okay, I don't put the limiter on the master. <laughs> Delay effects. Um. I guess that's a delay on that sound. <laughs> or do you mean micro delay? Maybe like um, millisecond delays between the channels. <laughs> Sometimes I put a, a compressor on the master if I'm working with like a really touchy synth that I made where if I accidentally like boost the velocity, it just kills my ears. So yeah, I guess I'll, there's a lot of little specific things. I wonder if I just scroll through the tracks, I'll see some things that are interesting. So this is the main, the main plugin that I use for everything. It's um, from, it's not from Pro Tools, but it's from the company that has all their plugins in Pro Tools and nowhere else. I used to have this a little higher and then when I was mixing it, I thought it sounded better or lower, but with the small room sizes, it really, it's really magical. So everything in like, um, like what and things like that like anything where like there's a sound that sounds like it's from the other room I just use this plugin I'm not like setting up binaural microphones or anything it's pretty easy to take like a, a mono sound and put it somewhere else with this plugin and it's not like any other reverb that I've used because usually if you pan the signal before the reverb, it doesn't really take it into account. But this one, yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> so with an auto pan before that has a nice effect. 
This is... Uh, I fed like a MIDI cable into my synth and... <laughs> Your stories come through too. <laughs> yeah, just like sent MIDI to the synth and recorded it. Everyone says bless you. Oh, you're reading the comments over there? <laughs> Reading some more stuff I think I missed. I never get creative blocks. I just always have one. <laughs> I don't think it's ever gone away. It goes it goes away for like moments where I just forget that I'm in front of a laptop. Like if I get a bit too focused, which is so rare. But other than that, I just feel like I'm not good at this, but I just kind of push through not being good at it until something sounds decent. <laughs> yeah, like, I can't pull, I don't have the old project files, but I'd open them up. But things like, there's a good one in XYZ. There's a couple other tricks, like, um, here I'll type it, 0 0.625 milliseconds. So it's definitely not mono safe, but that amount of delay between the channels is the delay that a sound coming from here. Oh, you can't see my stupid hand. <laughs> um, that's how long it would take for sound to travel the distance between your ears. There's a section here. I'll find it. It's like a Windows 95 sound. Oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, and my curse has disappeared. Oh, this is not good. Okay, I don't have a cursor, so... This stream's over. <laughs> I don't have a cursor! Does anybody know how to fix this? Because I it happens to me all the time, and the only thing I can do is restart Ableton. I'm trying to get at the master fader. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm just going to restart Ableton, and while I do that, I will put this camera battery back in the camera. Oh, tell me that that... Oh, is that a real key command that works? Okay, give me a second. It really smells like plastic. Okay, I think the camera will work for a little bit longer. But I'm pretty much gone through the whole song, so. Wait, people have seen my schedule in Ableton? Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> That's today's schedule. Yeah, I watched the the podcast H3 did with Bill Words. It was so so nice to watch. Okay, let's see if this will work for a little bit longer. <laughs> oh my god, what is that? Maybe the camera's finally given up all right well let's just not 
Oh my god, that is terrifying. Let me try something. All right, so the camera is doing the exact same thing just normally. Like, I don't have it plugged into my computer, so I have an apology to make to my dad. <laughs> and maybe it's a Christmas gift idea for him, the same camera. All right, well... I think that's just about it. If anybody else has some questions that I can answer about anything or the song. I might have missed some questions from before because I was trying to fix the camera. Maybe I can do like a webcam. In OBS. Sparko cam. I have the stupidest webcam on this laptop. It's at the bottom left 